Yeah, it's good to have you today again on our Eagles Nest podcast. Your regular host, Manaya Bakuboni, is my name. And I'm continuing on the marks of the disciple. You must deny yourself and follow Christ. You must become a new man. Today's churches is full of converts. We have many converts, but we have no disciples. If at all, very few. We have many who come to the altar and recite a prayer and walk away thinking that that is the end of their salvation. If it were the end, Paul will not admonish us. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. What saying that prayer does is like gaining admission to a school. It opens, it gives you that admission letter to enter into KNUST or into Lagos. But for you to attend lectures, do your assignments, and do your final dissertation, plus your exams, you are not coming out with a degree. So that process of attending those lectures, writing your IAs, doing your exams, and your project work and dissertation at the end is what qualifies you. So we are saved. We gain admission to become part of the kingdom when we pray that prayer. But there is a process. And that process is what Jesus Christ says, except you deny yourself. That is why he goes on further to explain that what shall it profit a man if he remains the same way and does not change and loses his own soul after he's gained the wealth. So worldliness must give, give way. We must deny ourselves. Our right to remain that same way and unchanged is the beginning of that self-denial. And it's a painful process. You see, to see what you are entitled to being taken away from you and sometimes rudely and forcefully and painfully it's a painful, dying process. It's a painful, dying process. Before a mango seed can become a mango tree, it must go into that ground there. It must become rotten. Termites must eat at it. Various earth animals must bore holes into it. But it is in the decay that when it comes into contact with water and the right nutrients, it sprouts and becomes a tree. And on it are thousands and thousands and thousands of mango fruits that it will bear over a period of its life. That is the process Jesus is calling us to, to deny our ourselves the comfort of being on the shelf or in the fridge as a mango and coming right there into the bushes and into the depths of the soil and being fed upon that pain of being fed upon by those termites is the denial process and as we do that we sprout forth springing forth and showing that very image and persona of Christ and bearing fruits and affecting many others and causing them also to change hallelujah so I use this illustration to just draw out that it's a painful process, the self-denial. And Paul gives a very classic example here in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 31. He says that what? We should put away clamor, evil speaking, okay, with all malice. We like speaking evil of people. One of the things I'm cultivating and believing God to do for the rest of my life is not to speak ill of people, especially in their absence. Do not speak ill of anyone. Let your thoughts, the Bible says, laugh, think, not evil. Let the interpretation of actions of people in your life be an interpretation of goodness. Do not impute evil. I'm not saying be, be naive. I'm not saying that do not be conscious and aware that people can do you harm and evil. No. All I'm saying is that always, always think, think of the best of people. Think positively, think properly, and do not speak evil. Do not become a gossip. Do not become a malicious person. Do not become someone who cuts people down. Don't cut other churches down. Don't cut men of God down. Don't speak ill of men of God. My, my, my father is Bishop Dagwood Mills. I honor him. He's a great man of God. He's an anointed man of God. He's called of God. God is using him mighty, and I celebrate him. I celebrate all the great men in the land. Reverend Crunchy Anka, a mighty apostle. I celebrate a, 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 a mighty. Mighty, mighty man like uh, uh, Robert Ampiakofi. I celebrate the fathers, Bishop Ajinasari. These are great stalwarts in the land. Listen, they are human. People may have their own flaws, but listen to me. Their flaw is not for you to judge because you did not call them. So do not speak evil of men of God. Do not speak evil of churches. Do not speak evil of pastors. Don't speak evil of your own pastor, of your departmental head, of your boss in the office. Don't speak evil of your wife to your friends. Don't speak evil of your neighbor in the neighborhood. Don't speak evil of another person political party. You like NDC, be in it. You like MPP, be in it. Do not always impute. Some people see something wrong with only their opponent and never with themselves. Don't speak ill. Let me say this to soccer fans. Of other football clubs out of jealousy and, and pain. Let your thoughts and your speech be garnished with good things. Don't speak evil. You see, a mouth that speaks evil cannot cast out devils. 
a mouth that speaks evil cannot raise the dead. That is why Jesus has given us the power to do all this. And yet we are powerless. Because that mouth has already become an agent and a tool of Satan. How can God use that same tool of Satan to advance his will and his purpose? Men of God have become chief gossips of one another, setting up one another. We even go to people's churches and intentionally set up stage miracles to embarrass them. So we can say they are fake. Why? Because they carry a grace and an anointing we don't have. Let us stop all these things. Let us stop setting up one another's churches. Let us stop saying bad things about each other's church just to draw members into ours. And let us walk in love. Let us be truly changed and truly transformed and renewed. Let us be changed. Don't speak ill about your children. Don't speak ill about your parents. The Bible is saying, it's an evil speaking. Evil speaking with all malice, your intention of speaking. Listen, let me let me just give you a rule as I as I round up. Anytime you are saying something to someone about another person, and it would make them have bad feelings towards the person you are talking about, hold your tongue. Do not let anyone have bad feelings about a third party, and it's because of your comments or your contribution. Let people always think the best of others because of the compliments you pay to them. If you have no compliments. Keep your mouth shut, you lose nothing. Become a true disciple. I especially invite you to our Sunday celebration service at 8.45 a.m. at Eagles Network International Ministry, number 20 at Bowie Street, not far from the Adenta Main Station. Our numbers you can call out on, this, on the screen. Wednesday service, we are there doing Bible study like this, going into the Word of God, 7 p.m. is our impartation service on Wednesday. And Friday, we have our special prayer and deliverance service. Come! And God will lift up every burden that has troubled you. You need counseling, you need guidance, 10 a.m. to 12 noon on Thursdays. Come around, whether it's about your business, about your personal life, about your marriage, demonic attacks, satanic oppression. You want us to dedicate your property, your business. Come, let's talk, and we'll extend a helping hand to you. God richly bless you for making time with me once again. Have a blessed week.